It's Entomology Animated, celebrating the amazing biology of insects using the power of digital animation. Ding! Hi, this is Eric Keller for Entomology Animated. In this video, we're going to talk about baking out maps based on the high and low subdivision level of my rainbow scarab beetle. So here is the model in ZBrush. If everything is set to the highest subdivision level, I have a total of 102 million polygons. That's a lot to work with, not something that I can easily rig in Maya. That's all the pieces at their highest subdivision level put together. Uh, what I want to do is I want to rig and animate the lowest subdivision level. This is what it looks like in Maya. That's much more reasonable. And this is about 300,000 polygons. So I want to get all this gorgeous detail onto my model. So how do I do it? Uh, by baking maps. So in ZBrush, I'm going to bake out a displacement map. And then in Substance Painter, I'm going to bake out a bunch of other maps. They're called difference maps because they compare the high resolution model to the low resolution model and then kind of bake the difference between the two into a texture map that you can reapply to create the illusion of all this detail when you render in Octane for Maya or whatever. Or in my case, it's going to be Octane for Maya. So I should say when I render in Octane for Maya, all these different texture maps that I'm baking out will help to add a lot of detail. Also in substance, as you'll see later in this video, those texture maps help when I want to create special types of smart materials or smart masks to create kind of a look of a worn, weathered surface. So all of it will be helpful. It's been a long road to get up to this point. It's all dry. It's all technical. It's not as fun as sculpting and texturing, but it's going to make texturing a lot easier. So let's take a quick look at how I create uh, displacement maps in ZBrush. The first thing I want to point out is I've made sure, as I mentioned over and over again in the last video, that all my UVs and all my surfaces, the topology at the lowest subdivision level in Maya matches what I have at the lowest subdivision level in ZBrush. So these UVs have been, you know, are on these parts of the beetle and all these parts of the beetle have been re-imported into ZBrush so the UVs are all consistent between the two, and that's very important. But you'll notice I've organized these into UDIMs. So ZBrush won't show that, but it does actually respect UDIMs. So as I create displacement maps, um, what I'll do is I'm gonna go into Z plugin and expand multi-map exporter. The only map that I'm currently interested in creating is a displacement map. I'm gonna turn off export mesh, I'm going to turn on subtools. That means that uh, it's going to create displacement maps for all the visible subtools. And I want to make sure everything's visible and I don't have anything in there that shouldn't be in there. And I'm also going to turn on merge maps. And what that means is that even though, say, for instance, the mouthpieces of this model are different objects, let's see, the mouthpieces are right here. They're all different surfaces in Maya and the same thing in ZBrush. They're all separate subtools, but they share the same texture space. So by turning on merge maps, that ensures that it's going to bake a map, a displacement map for each of these parts, but then it's going to put them all into the same texture map that matches the UV layout that you see right here. So that's very helpful. It saves a lot of time. I don't have to do anything in Photoshop. ZBrush does it all for me. So Subtools is on, Merge Maps is on. Even though you can't see the UDIMs in ZBrush, it will create uh, textures based on the UDIMs. And uh, I want to set this to 4K. So I'm going to do 4K. Uh, let's go down to Export Options. Uh, I'm, going to ch I'm going to turn on File Names. This allows me to change the UV tile ID format. So this is set to UDIM by default. I'm going to click on this until I get Actually, UDIM is what I wanted, sorry, but you can see all the different options. I just keep clicking to kind of toggle through them. So I want this. This says UDIM. What it, what it means is that each texture map is going to have like dot .1001.1002.1003.1004.1011 corresponding with the lovely UDIMs you see in this model, right? So it's going to name them properly. That's all that means. Now I've set that, set the way that I want. I don't care about all this because I'm just creating a displacement map. Um, and what I'm going to do is, is oops. And then what I'm going to do, I set this to 4K under displacement maps. 
I'm going to set the subdivision level to 1, meaning that it's going to compare this to the highest subdivision level, make a map based on that. I'm going to turn on adaptive, which means I don't have to worry about this, so it adapts to the amount of detail in parts of the model. Turn on smooth UV. I'm going to set the mid value to 0.5. That means that 50% uh, gray in the displacement texture map makes is not going to displace the surface. Anything higher than that, in other words, lighter colors from gray to white are going to displace outwards. Darker colors from 0.5 down to zero are going to displace inwards. The other option, the other common option is to set this to zero, meaning that negative values displace inwards and positive values displace outwards. Uh, Octane doesn't work as great with that type of texture map. It works better if a mid, with a mid value set to 0.5. So I'm going to do that. And I'm going to leave off three channels in 32-bit. This means that it's going to create a 16-bit grayscale image by default. So I'll leave that the way that it is. Everything else is good. So now I'm going to hit the Create All Maps button and go play some video games for a while while this cooks. So let's do that. So ZBrush has finished baking out the displacement maps and I've finished making a fool of myself online trying to play video games. So um, these are the final maps. I took the PSD files that ZBrush made into Photoshop and I saved them out as 16-bit PNGs. If you're wondering why I use 16-bit displacement maps, I usually find that they're good enough. If they're not good enough, then I'll go back and make some 32-bit displacement maps. But these usually work just fine, especially when they're coupled with all the other maps that I'm going to create next in Substance. So I did rename the files so that they correspond to the UDEM. So you can see Vindex 62, this is the name of the model. So it's version 62 of the uh, Vindex Rainbow Scarab Beetle. DM for displacement map, and then you notice I have dot 1001, and then it's dot PNG, although it's not showing the extension there. So these are all organized by UDIM, and they also match what I have in Maya. So if we look in the outliner, they match this naming convention. So it's all nice and neat, and that's gonna make things easier when I go into substance. Uh, so next, I'm gonna go into substance. So before I do any painting in Substance, I am going to bake out some uh, maps. So like a curvature map and uh, normal maps, some world space normal, position, etc. I'm going to make as many maps as I can using baking because they're all going to feed into my uh, painting plan, um, into my layers when I'm painting in Substance. Uh, the problem is, is that in order to do this, I need to export the high poly version of the model and the low poly version of the model and bring them both into Substance and then let Substance bake, right? Uh, it's important for the low poly version of the model to have um, UVs. And I'm saying low poly in this case is relative because my low poly version of the model is like 200,000 polygons. It's not very low poly, but that is the lowest level that I'm, I'm using in this, in this particular instance. So um, the problem is, is that if I merge all of this, the highest subdivision levels, all into one object and then export, I'm going to end up with a model that's 102 million polygons for the high poly version. And it's just not going to write that file to disk. It's just too high. But I don't want to start compromising and lowering the subdivision levels because I really want as much detail as possible. So what I've done instead is this. Um, I've broken the model up. And this is the advantage, of course, using groups here in Maya. So in Maya, this has the UVs. I've grouped these all based on their UDIMs. And I'm just selecting the groups, and I'm going to choose File, uh, Export Selection. And I'll export it as an OBJ. And what Maya will do is that it will, it will merge all the objects within the group into one object, like the mouth, which is currently all these different parts. It's going to merge it into one object but it will keep the uvs and that that works just fine so that will be my low poly version of the model and then in zbrush what i'm going to do is i'm going to find the corresponding um sub tools for each group so in other words so the mouth group let's see if i turn everything off and then i'll turn this on so right i would select these parts that match what i have in the group in um in Maya, and I'm going to put them at the highest subdivision level, and then go down to the merge, 
turn on UVs and choose Merge Visible. And when I do that, do it real quick, it's going to create a new subtool, not a subtool, but a new tool that has the merged. So I have this merged version. It's one subtool, uh, but it's at the highest subdivision level. It's got all that nice detail. It's about 6 million polygons, almost 5.5 million polygons. So it's still a big file. Uh, I think the UVs will get screwed up when you do that. Well, actually, if you turn on the UV button, they should preserve them. But as I mentioned before, the high poly ver version of the model doesn't really need to have matching UVs. It's only the low poly version because it's comparing low to high and then baking that into a map. Okay. So before I hit the export button to export the 5.4 million poly version of the mouth parts, I'm going to turn off the group button so it doesn't break the model up into poly groups. Um, or any other funky thing like that. Um, you can also find this option down here at the bottom of the tool palette. So here's the tool palette. Under export, it's this GRP button. In my custom interface, I put the GRP button up here next to the export button, just so that they're nice and handy and visible, so don't forget to turn that off. So I'll export that and save it to disk. So then, let's go in here and I'm gonna choose new. Um, I'm gonna set this to 4K. Don't really care about the other settings because all I'm doing right now is uh, baking. So I'm going to select from my meshes folder where I did the export. You can see I have 1001 high and 1001 low. So um, let's pick. So I'm going to choose 1012 low. That's the mouth parts. Choose open and then choose OK. So here's the low poly version of the mouth. You can see that much detail on there. Um, then I'm going to go in here. Let's, let's see what's right there. I'm going to go down to Texture uh, Set Settings down here and click on Bake Maps. And I'm going to put the output size as 4K. And right here where it says High Definition Meshes, I'm going to click on this little page icon choose the corresponding high polygon version of the mesh. That's 1012 high. So you can see it's considerably larger than the low poly version in terms of file size. I'll choose open. And then I'm gonna choose the maps that I wanna create and I wanna create them all. Well, I don't really care about ID. I'm gonna create normal, world space, ambient occlusion, curvature, position, thickness. And um, okay, I usually find the default settings work pretty well. So I'm gonna leave these the way that they are. I'm gonna have too many problems with them. Um, and then I'm going to click on bake. Then I'm going to click on bake 1012 mesh maps. I've already done this, so I'm not going to do it again. And it's going to make all these maps for this model. And I've done that for each one of these. I had to do it a bunch of times. Kind of tedious. But in the end, I get a bunch of cool maps that work pretty well. So once I've done that for all the groups and all the parts of the beetle, I'm going to create a new scene. New, uh, I'm going to create a new project in Substance Painter. Uh, I'm going to set this to um, PBR Metallic Roughness because I'm going to use metallic and roughness maps in my Octane render using Octane 4 for Maya. So that should work just fine. I don't think, yeah, I think that'll work just fine. Uh, I'm going to set document resolution. Let's set this to 4K. Um, and then the last thing I did is I exported, I did actually export a merged version. All of these things as a single model at the lowest subdivision level. So I exported that. So I'm going to select that model. It's Vindex low, merged low. It's this one right here. And then I'm going to add all the maps that I baked out. So in substance, so you can see I have ambient occlusion, all of these maps, curvature, all of these maps, normal, all of these maps, position, thickness, and world space normal. So a lot of maps. I'm going to bring them all in and choose OK. And it's going to create a new project. I don't care about this project, so I can discard that. So there is an advantage, even though it was tedious to break up the model like that and bake all those maps separately. One advantage is since a lot of the parts of the beetle are very close to each other, if, if you bake out the, um, the whole beetle as one object, 
then in your normal maps, you're gonna get some uh, artifacts from a lot of these pieces that are close together. But by breaking up the model into smaller pieces, so like one for just the head, and one for just the front legs, and so on, I still get a little bit of that, but it's not as bad, it's not as much. So there's less cleanup in the normal maps that I have to do. But here is the um, lowest poly version of the mesh in Substance Painter. And if you notice, I have my texture set list. So each one of these, if I click on these, you'll see, you'll recognize they correspond to my UDIMs and they also have the same code. So again, everything is consistent between Maya, ZBrush, and now Substance. And the great thing about this is that as I'm painting, I can make parts of these invisible. Let's say I just want to focus on this part right here, or let's say I wanted to focus on the mouth parts. I can hide everything else. And there we go. So that's that's a nice advantage of, of have breaking it up into UDIMs. When you do a new project, you want to make sure that create texture set per UDIM tile is on. And that's, and that's what allows this to work like this. So this will be very helpful when I'm painting. And then the last thing I'm going to do is um, select my map. So if I go into project, you can see this is all the maps that I've imported. And I could even import those displacement maps too if I want to. So let's do that. Let's import those displacement maps. So I'm going to click on this, add resources, and then find. Here's my displacement maps. They're all PNG, 16 bit PNG. So I'm going to choose open. Set these all to texture. Set them import to the project. Choose import, so it's going to add them. Now I've got a whole lot of texture maps that I could work with as I start painting. So if I go, let's say, to 1001 here, which is the pronotum, then I can say under texture set, I can choose select map, and I'm just going to type in here uh, 1001. So there's my normal map. This is be world space normal. I didn't create an ID map, so I don't care about that. Ambient occlusion, right there. Curvature map, right there. Position map, right there. And thickness map. So you can see, now I've got all that wonderful detail that I sculpted in the high-res version in ZBrush. This, by the way, this looks like an artifact, but that's actually intentional. I flattened that part out in ZBrush because I noticed on my specimen, I had a lot of wearing on the detail on that part of the surface, and I thought that looked a bit more realistic than having everything kind of evenly detailed. But so, as I do this for each part of the model, so I can go in here, select normal map, I'm gonna type in 1002, here's my normal map, world space, I'm in occlusion. Let's bring this up here. Curvature. Position. And thickness. Now, let's see his head's looking nice and detailed. Even though this is a low poly version of the model, that's all the high poly details from ZBrush. That I baked out in substance. I hope that's not too complicated. It's laborious, but in the end, You'll see how, what a huge difference it makes. So I'm gonna pause this for a moment and then uh, set all my other maps. Okay, so now I've got all my texture maps assigned to the various texture sets. All right, you click on each one of these, you can see they've all been assigned correctly. They've all been assigned correctly. It took about five minutes, so it's not that big a deal. And I got nice detail that I can work with see detail on the eyes, on the head, on the horn, right here on the elytra, all that nice sculpting stuff that I did in ZBrush has now been baked into a map. And back here on the back, 
So I am ready to start painting and I'm going to do that in the next movie.